In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Greetings, everybody. My name is Archbishop Gregory. I am head of the Genuine Orthodox Church in America. We acknowledge ourselves as the true successors of the Russian Church abroad. Under the great hierarchs, Metropolitans Anthony, Anastasi, and Philaret. Why? Because we have not succumbed to any heresy or schism. And in our ongoing effort to try to explain to people the many pitfalls out there of the many different synods who call themselves orthodox, but in reality they're schismatics or heretics, we are making this video to describe one synod uh, which is located in Europe, named the Milan Synod, <clears throat> the Milan Synod, headed by um, person called Evloyos, Archbishop Evloyos of Milan. Okay, this person is an ecumenist and if there is any place in the Orthodox Church that's called the garbage pit of Orthodoxy, this group would be would be number one on the list because they accept everything nothing is nothing is uh, to be rejected they give communion to everybody who calls themselves orthodox and if you kiss the archbishop's hand he will make you a clergyman which i will try and explain many instances where uh, there's no discernment um, about who he ordains and why. First of all, a little bit of background. In Greece, there is 10 million Orthodox people, 1 million separated from uh, the nine at the time of the ecumenical movement. And this 1 million uh, had uh, many groups in Greece who were uh, confessing the faith and against ecumenism. At one time the head was an Archbishop Oxentius. Now, one cannot explain why at times uh, bishops, when they make other bishops, do not examine them, but this Archbishop, when he ordained this man, Avaloyus, uh, did not examine him very carefully. He was in Europe, I mean in, in Italy, uh, and he made him a bishop. Then, after a number of years, he began exhibiting ecumenical tendencies, doing things different than what the old calendars church in Greece did. Oxentius himself found himself in deep trouble because he again ordained uh, some other people in, in uh, Spain, Lisbon, a person in Lisbon, without now the consent of his synod, and he was brought to trial. Before he was brought to trial, he knew he was going to go uh, before a spiritual court. He wrote a letter giving this person of lawyers his complete independence. And then this person was let go or uh, was on his own. Uh, of course, when Oxentius did this, it, it had no meaning. Uh, I mean, uh, a person uh, doesn't get his complete independence by a letter or autonomy by a letter from an archbishop or by himself. And so um, there was no restraint on this uh, lawyer to do whatever he wished. So here is his picture. And here is another one. So as he was living his life in Europe, 
many occasions arose where he would show to everybody that he was not seriously an orthodox hierarch. When the Balaman Union, for example, came, um, was signed by all the, um, the new calendars, uh, he also assented to their, their decision that the Coptic Church was part of the Orthodox Church. And he wrote a encyclical. And it says, the fraternal message to all bishops of the Oriental and Byzantine churches, which are all members of the same Orthodox Church, the Church of Christ. So, in this letter, he agrees with the Balaman Union. And he calls them the Oriental Churches, which are those who are separated from the Orthodox Church of the Fourth Ecumenical Council, as part of the Church of Christ. And this is is encyclical, we'll put it up in the link, and there's his signature. What else does he do to show that he is not orthodox? He is like the Kyprianites, in that he gives communion to everybody. And speaking of the Kyprianites, when one Metropolitan Cyprian in Greece was deposed for his ecumenism and he had no place to go because he wanted to start a synod. Where does everybody go when they have no place to go? They go to Evloius' synod because they will accept everybody, anybody. And so uh, this Cyprian went there and he wanted to start his own church not Christ Church, but his own synod, his own church. So he ordained with um, Evloius Chrysostom Gonzalez, who is located in Edna, California. He had no place to go. He also was searching for ordination. And if you want someone to lay your hands on you, you go to Evloius. He doesn't care who he lays his hands on. And so, he had other bishops, um, very, very sad to say, who were very great supporters of homosexuality in Europe. Because they wanted to be ordained, and so he ordained them, and um, they re some re reposed. Um, being, all right, what can we say? Um, died, died of AIDS. Usually an Orthodox bishop, if he wants to pretend that he's Orthodox, if he's ever asked, what do you think of Masonry? Um, do you have Masons in your church? They, uh, being out of shame, would, would try and cover it up and say, no, 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 that's not right. Of course, because masonry is condemned by the church. Condemned by the church of Greece, condemned by the church of, of Russia. Anyone who's a mason cannot take communion. But not so with this Evloius. This one is a mason, openly. And he doesn't, he doesn't hide the fact that he's a mason, but he even propagates it and asks his clergy if he gets new clergy that he's new, newly ordained, quote-unquote, ordained, would you like to become, would you like to become a mason and join the lodge? And so he travels from a city to city in Europe and goes to the lodges and, and, and bestows, all dressed up in his regalia as if he was an Orthodox bishop and bestowing gifts and prizes, uh, whatever, and awards. So, in this way also, he is not an Orthodox bishop. He's a propagator of masonry. <clears throat> and he has in his, uh, among all his clergy, the various people who, as we said, he gets them out from the gutter and uh, 
they just they just have to acknowledge him and then he will ordain him and these some of these people have caused confusion um, and destruction in the Orthodox Church by the internet because they have blogs one such person um, who originally his name was Muhammad Sweden um, he it was probably uh, married more than one yeah he was married more than once he ordained him a deacon and he has a blog uh, which is known as the notes from the underground which should probably be called notes from the underworld <clears throat> because in that he mixes news with slander. And he has caused a lot of confusion. So people should beware. Beware of anybody who's associated with the Milan Synod. The Milan Synod has caused great confusion. Throughout Europe, they ordained people now, I think in Bulgaria, <clears throat> uh, not very good reputation. But that's his normal MO. Um, so, it's just a word of caution. Um, see if what I am saying is true before you even consider this synod. One last word now about one of his bishops. Uh, he ordained one person who's called Giovanni Mapelli. He was uh, a priest among the New Calendars, Orthodox, and he was noted all over Italy for participating in gay right parades in the Vatican. And this person wanted to be a bishop and so he went to Giovanni, uh, he went to uh, Avloyus and after knowing that this man, who he was and his stand on homosexuality, he made him, he made him a bishop. <clears throat> A lot more can be said about the character which we have heard from eyewitnesses of this of lawyers. But uh, the fact, the main fact, is that he is not an orthodox hierarch, in that his faith is not that of the orthodox church. So no one should have any communication with him whatsoever. As we said, his synod is known as the garbage pit of orthodoxy. Um, it's sad to say, but uh, this is the reality. And this synod has no shame in saying that they will ordain a smoker, uh, they have a smoking clergy, or a homosexual uh, person who is, act who is active in that practice, or they are a mason, or um, an ecumenist, it doesn't matter. If you've been deposed, it doesn't matter. Um, if you've been justly deposed, of course, um, only the justly deposed people go to uh, lawyers. And um, if you acknowledge him as a bishop, if you can just say, I believe that you are a true bishop, and he will ordain you, <clears throat> quote unquote, ordain you. So. Everyone beware, have nothing to do, have nothing, absolutely nothing to do with this so-called bishop who uses the Orthodox Church and in reality is just blaspheming the Church. So God help you, beware, be careful. There are many pitfalls and traps out there when you're searching for true Orthodoxy. Okay, well, let God protect you. I mean.